Good morning and a very warm welcome to everyone out there. Myself, Joya Khan, Ambassador of Change from Getty, and your host this morning. Holding the beckon of success, I bring greetings from the entire Getty fraternity as we usher in winds of change on this live forum of detox for educators. I feel privileged to welcome our esteemed speaker, Dr. Maria Hadijela Drodoravova, Head of Research Control, Euro College, Limassol, Cyprus. She will be enriching us with her views and presentation on the topic, Heritage Tourism in Family Perspective. A very interesting topic, dear viewers, as we all know that people who love to travel, they love to experience the places the artifacts and activities that that authentically represent the stories and people of the past and present. Heritage tourism creates jobs and business opportunities, helps protect resources, and often improves the quality of life for local residents. Now, a little about our speaker this morning. Ma'am holds a doctorate from the Department of Educational Research University of Lancaster, UK. She works as a head of research, a senior lecturer at CTL Euro College in Limassol at CTL. She is also the head of the hospitality and tourism department, coordinator of the undergraduate hotel management program, head of EU funding programs and UNESCO peace speaker. She has significant experience in EU funded Erasmus and Horizon 2020 projects. Her research combines the fields of education and tourism using qualitative research methods. Her research interests focus on the topic such as educational research, adult learning, hospitality, and heritage tourism, dark tourism, and cultural tourism, and innovative technologies in tourism. Her research work has been published in leading academic journals, such as the International Journal of Hospitality Management, Technological Forecasting and Social Change, and the Journal of Heritage Tourism. So I'm sure we can look forward to a very, very interesting session ahead. So a very warm welcome to you, ma'am. We are happy to have you with us this morning. Over to you without much delay. Good morning. Good morning to all of you. Many thanks for the invitation. Good morning to all professors, all academics, all my students. Good morning to my colleagues and my friends in uh, in uh, academic uh, uh, society. Uh, I will be presenting today uh, one presentation, one research study which I uh, uh, work on with my co-author, Dr. Prokopis Christou, from Cyprus, from different university. And today I will be talking to you about nurturing the younger generation in heritage tourism from family perspective. So I will start with the background of this research study. Uh, as I said, I will speak about family tourism, heritage tourism, and uh, family uh, as its role uh, within uh, these two types of tourism. Um, we can say, or you know, from uh, researchers, we understand that family tourism allows uh, viewing tourists as a collective uh, activity, uh, where you know, uh, which which um, um, is. Um, um, encouraging intergenerational interactions between generations, between grandparents, parents, children, grandchildren, and socialization of every member of a family. At the same time, uh, it allows us to uh, say that um, family tourism uh, is a transfer of knowledge, values, beliefs, uh, visions, understandings, symbols, and culture to the next generation. Also, if we go more in depth into family tourism, we can see that one family which is uh, traveling around, trying to see different places, 
so we, we, we can um, understand it as you know family that tourism is family activity which promotes family togetherness yes because family comes together bonding and collective memory uh, of families um, collective experiences mutual uh, feelings at the same time and also researchers suggest that families are motivated to engage in tourism as a way to educate uh, their new generation, their children um, about tourism. And at the same time, we focus on heritage tourism. So we know that heritage tourism is a very special interest type of tourism. And because we talk about families, it involves families visiting you know, heritage sites, monuments, uh, archaeological places uh, and many other places with motives to provide educational benefit for next generation, for their children. Um, very recent uh, research studies show that family engagement in the heritage sites derive from families' motivations. Some families are motivated to visit it uh, heritage sites and also a huge role plays awareness, which is a key role in determining the ultimate perceived educational benefits. Um, um, also, uh, it's nice to know that um, many families, and because of COVID, we could see this very often, travel to well-known heritage sites maybe within their countries or outside their countries to help their children to acquire new experiences and knowledge and at the same time trigger their curiosity. Uh, so what is the research problem? Um, we uh, see that family tourism is not a new research phenomenon. Family tourism is here with us quite a long time. We have research dating back 40 years ago. So uh, really we have a lot of information about family tourism. Um, heritage tourism, again, is not a new uh, research perspective. But what we don't know, we don't know about the significance of family interactions in processes of heritage resonance, yes? And we truly believe me with my co-author that if we know how and why um, a new generation, our children, is nurtured in heritage sites, then uh, we can um, um, enhance uh, all um, hospitality and tourist providers everywhere, everywhere, globally, to become resilient. And if they are resilient, then they can uh, easily overcome different uh, seasonalities and uh, shocks, you know, which uh, happen in the tourist sector. And we have many shocks because of COVID in tourist sector, yes. We are on our knees, yes, in hospitality and tourism, so we need to do something about this. And uh, comprehending, you know, how families are engaged in and facilitate the learning in younger generation members in heritage history is critical to delivering a better fit between family needs, yes, and special interest tourists. So tour providers can create uh, uh, heritage products which are very suitable to family needs. Uh, and uh, at the same time, uh, these days we um, understand even better than any time before that the family is the most universal, um, enduring and adaptable social institution and tourism is the world's largest industry so let's combine them and find the best of it together so what is the research purpose the research purpose of this research study is very simple and um, we try to you know 
using qualitative research study uh, to shed a light on the role and functions on family in facilitating the learning of younger generation with particular emphasis on heritage tourism. Understanding the way the next generation is nurtured in heritage tourism is of practical significance to the sustainability of the heritage tourist product. And let's move further and let's see what is the research question. So, as I said at the very beginning, we combine two uh, perspectives. So we draw on heritage tourism and family tourism literature to answer the following research questions. So because we are in qualitative research, our research questions are qualitative, which starts on how and why. Okay, so how do families behave in heritage tourism? And how do families nurture? Yes, what is happening there? How do a family nurture their children, their young generation in heritage tourism? What is going on? Yes, what learning, what information are taking place when families are visiting uh, heritage sites? What is taking place before they go to visit any places? Yes, what is happening in their homes? What is happening in their cars when they are driving to see different monuments? What is happening at the visits? Yes, what every family is doing, what the father is doing, what the grandmother is doing, what the children are doing, and what takes place after they go home after when they sit into their cars or they walk back home, after when they are in their living rooms, yes, because there is still taking place something, there is still happening something. So we want to see what is this, you know, and how it takes place. So now I will try to explain two concepts and don't misunderstand me if I am over critical because um, I understand that uh, we need to more uh, we need more research in relation to heritage tourism and I was uh, last week participating in one a huge uh, conference in relation to hospitality and tourism in Cyprus and different leaders professors academics uh, researchers uh, visited uh, the conference and I had the opportunity to discuss with them about uh, heritage tourism and we see that there are many uh, uh, gaps and many uh, empty places which we need to fill uh, in heritage uh, research. So um, we uh, um, understand these days because of the pandemic, because of uh, many different economic difficulties uh, which are taking place because of various conflicts which are running in different places as well, we see that um, sustainable tourism, biotourism, green tourism, farm tourism, spiritual tourism, creative tourism, heritage tourism, this, you know, special interest tourism are very uh, modern phenomenon in research. And we understand that only this type of tourist can restart the global tourism after this huge uh, pandemic uh, related to COVID. So uh, we uh, acknowledge the significance of heritage tourism and we know that it is be, be, or it belongs to the global tourist industry. Uh, and also uh, commonly regarded, this type of tourism, regarded as activity by tourists in a space where historic artifacts are presented. So this is very understandable to all of us. Uh, we also see when we read different articles, we, are the, uh, we understand that heritage tourism is divided into cultural heritage, natural heritage and weird heritage elements. What I am calling and I would like to ask 
my colleagues, my research, other researchers to do is to give maybe clearer um, understandings and uh, definitions about each type of heritage tourism. Maybe we need to uh, create new classification uh, in relation to heritage tourism. At the same time, when we see research on heritage tourism, we can understand that uh, it is related to individuals, yes, uh, and heritage monuments. Uh, so there is uh, not we don't know we don't understand how communities have different groups of people are engaged into heritage. Uh, tourists, so we take in perspective of individual tourists when we talk about heritage tourists. Uh, and at the same time, um, the, the, the most research uh, focus is on reasoning um, or trying to understand motivations why people visit heritage sites. Yes, so we moving to motivations of tourism uh, in relation to heritage. And what I understand, and also I agree with, uh, with uh, the researchers, is that, yes, uh, we should, uh, up to today, when we talk about heritage tourism, we associate this type of tourism with cultural tourism. But it doesn't mean that every heritage tourist belongs to cultural tourism. And perhaps we should uh, stop simplifying this understanding and uh, delve more um, into a heritage uh, phenomenon and see how it can be maybe uh, researched separately or differently, uh, not only combining cultural heritage uh, together. Here I have one definition about heritage tourism. And you ask me, why do you put this definition on our screen? The answer is very simple. Uh, I like the definition because it's really simple definition. And uh, I am criticizing this definition at the same time because you, I feel, or maybe when you read this uh, paragraph, you may feel that, you know, everything is heritage. Yes, everything belongs to heritage tourism. And the question is like, what doesn't belong to heritage tourism? Yes, so if you are here and you are researching heritage, I would really ask you to consider this uh, understanding, to consider this definition um, and start uh, thinking of heritage tourism maybe differently because yes, heritage tourism is uh, concerned with, with exploring both material and also immaterial uh, remains of the past. Yes, um, so it is about uh, many many things. It's about our travel passes, it's about our monuments, our history, our uh, uh, um, socialization, our culture. But what heritage tourism is not about, yes, we don't know. So I would uh, highlight this uh, and research it uh, much more. Let's go to the family tourism. So a family tourism is defined as tourists motivated by the need for spending quality time with one's family. Also, uh, family tourism is the umbrella under which uh, we have different members of family. Yes, so family tourists understand that when we talk about family tourists, we know that we speak about grandparents, his grandfather, grandmother. We speak about parents, children. We speak about grandchildren, also about siblings, cousins, yes, in-laws, uh, and households as well. Yes, so it's a huge umbrella under which we have different members, yes, stakeholders of a family. And um, 
uh, we uh, relate family tourists to leisure and recreation uh, research. Uh, we uh, understand uh, about what is happening when father is missing during leisure and recreation of family. We have understanding on what one family is doing in Legoland, because there is research about. We know uh, how older generation nurtures their new generation into troubled past. For example, we know how um, older generation takes their grandchildren to see different um, places related to uh, wars, different places related to their pain, family pain, family death, where family members died because of war. We know how this takes place. It is explained in a very nice way. We also know and we have understandings about uh, about um, uh, need of uh, leisure and recreation, and how this is related to uh, parents' well-being and parents' psychology. Yes, so it's important for parents to spend uh, leisure and recreation time with their families because of psychological um, uh, well-being. Um, but again, we don't know how one family is learning at heritage sites, yes? We know that families are going to different places because of um, educational motives, because they want their children to have, to, to, to uh, increase knowledge, yes? But we don't know how this takes place, yes? So let's research it together. Let's see what is happening there. Uh, and what I need to explain you. This research took place in Cyprus. Cyprus is one island with very, very rich history, uh, which goes to Greek history as well. Um, our history is related to the uh, early Christianity. Yes, uh, we have many archaeological sites. Yes, so we are very rich um, uh, heritage place site, and we are challenging one thing here, because if you uh, read about heritage tourism, the researchers uh, are claiming that heritage tourism is very popular, very famous at destinations which are. Uh, not popular, or they, don't, they do not have sea, sun, and sand. But Cyprus is very popular sea, sun, and sun destination. At the same time, it is very famous for its heritage sites. Yes, so we are very rich island. And uh, I will not be going through different places. What I want to tell you is that uh, one very typical Cypriot family can do on Sunday morning, what they can do. They wake up and they say, oh, let's go to this and this monastery, church, huge church. Let's light candle in this church and we can have our meze in one restaurant nearby. This is our very typical Sunday. So we go all family and we are very big families. For example, I have five children. Yes, it's very normal to have a family where are nine siblings with many, many cousins. And it's very popular that family on Sunday is gathering together and they go for different trips. They go to see different churches, to light candle, to pray, and they go to eat for Sunday lunch. Yes, this is very typical here in Cyprus. And we are actively, you know, involved into this activity, family activity. And we are very family oriented uh, in Cyprus, despite we are international island, despite we have many tourists 
and we have many international people living in Cyprus. Yes, for your understanding, we have like only in Limassol, we have about 50,000 international people living in Limassol and we are 200,000 uh, big uh, city. Uh, now, just you to, ex to imagine that if you travel to Cyprus uh, and you want to see different places, you want to see one city, you want to see visit one city, one day is not enough. Why? Because uh, to visit, for example, Paphos, which is uh, one small city with uh, airport uh, from Limassol, it takes you 35 minutes by car to go to Paphos. You have to go, you have to go to Kato Paphos Archaeological Park, which is a huge place. You walk, you need to have athletic shoes. You walk one day, uh, and opposite you, you can see Har Paphos Harbor and Port is a beautiful place. And you need to walk around the harbor. You are on the seaside. And of course, you have to visit tombs of the kings. So one day is not enough to spend here. Outside Limassol, we have a very popular curium with big, with first spa, with big, first church and a huge amphitheater, which even today we have festivals, we have, uh, for example, ballet orchestra can come and give performance to audience in this amphitheater. What I want to say, these places which you see on your screen are the most visited heritage sites here in, Lim in Cyprus during the last year, which we still had COVID, yes? Mm. So, uh, what I want to highlight is that because of COVID, I think everywhere in every country and also research shows that we were as families supporting domestic tourism. Yes. So family is very important when you want to research and when you are considering tourism today. Yes. We start understanding the uh, importance of family role within tourism even much more than any time before is yes, because we were talking about groups of people yes but maybe couples but now we see that family was supporting tourism all over the whole period of pandemic and different lockdowns everywhere yes so really it's very strong uh, family uh, position here uh, what I want to say here on this screen is that it's not new. I am not going to reveal something new when I tell you that, yes, Cypriot families are visiting heritage sites. So our participants, are they claimed during our interviews that they visit heritage sites. So it's nothing new because I want to show you that really it is happening. So Cypriot families are visiting castles historical places, archaeological sites, museums, galleries, yes. Uh, so you see here on the screen their quotations stating that yes, we do it, yes, we go, we want to see these places. So who is our participant? Is the question, is the answer. Our participant are, and this happened really naturally, you know, you say that qualitative research offers flexibility. Yes, huge flexibility, but it's time consuming. And it is. So we collected data last year between July and December. Uh, the data were collected. Uh, some of them were face-to-face -face interviews, but some of, the, of them were uh, Zoom interviews because we still had some lockdowns because of COVID. And... Um, when we started uh, data collection, we were thinking like, who to approach, you know, we want families, so how to start? And it came very naturally to us, to me and my colleague, because we have children, yes? And because our children go to school and because our children have teachers. So what we did, we started a collection of our data with uh, uh, the teachers of our children. So we asked their families to give their stories about 
how they nurture their new generation inherited sites. So then we say, oh, we have only Cypriot families. So we don't go to mixed families where both parents are from different countries or one parent is from Cyprus and the other is from uh, other country. Why? Because we understood that if both parents are coming from the same country, they share something which you cannot explain because these people, they create family. They are a couple and they uh, share a mutual experience from the school. Yes, they learn something similar, the same knowledge they get from their schools because they used to go to similar type of schools, yes? So they share something like cultural, you know, these hidden things which is difficult to explain. And if you have a couple from mixed marriage where maybe father is Cypriot but mother is from different country, maybe they are not engaged that actively into heritage activities, yes? Because they say, oh, because my wife is not from Cyprus, we don't... Um, uh, perform this activity, yes, but if both parents are from the same country, and you can see uh, in your uh, place as well, then you are more active in some type of activities and heritage activities are uh, included here as well. So yes, we naturally <laughs> collected data from Cypriot families who are uh, two thirds of our participants are educators. Uh, from the pre-primary uh, education up to university professors. Yes, because that how it was the, uh, the uh, entrance to our research participants. And uh, um, the, the uh, sampling uh, uh, of our data is snowball sampling because for example, uh, we got one family to interview and then this family said, okay, we have friends or I have my brother yes, who would like you to, you know, talk to him, to his family and he can explain you about heritage in their family. So yes, we were making our ball was getting bigger, you know, uh, and we uh, acknowledged noble something here in this research. And what happened else, uh, this research is very traditional qualitative research. So um, we um, could say that we did, or we uh, adopted inductive approach, but really we didn't know a lot about uh, families engaging in heritage sites. So we went into unknown area for us. Uh, and we uh, analyze data through uh, very traditional thematic analysis using coding process. Uh, and we uh, used the help of NVIVO program, which is very nice program, very easy and helpful. So uh, this is what happened in data collection, data analysis and data uh, 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 or uh, findings, uh, writing a process. Uh, here are the research, the, the questions of our interviews. We have analyzed all, uh, we, uh, we have seven questions, or we give seven questions to our research participants. Although we didn't analyze the last question, we uh, analyzed the six, uh, or we are presenting here the first six questions. The one question where we are asking about how, uh, is differentiating heritage uh, visit in domestic country rather than in uh, different country or you know what are the differences between visiting places at home and outside your home in you know different uh, sites different countries than we did not include into this uh, study because we see that is a bit different uh, is driving us into different perspectives, uh, these this, uh, answers to our participants. So what I want to tell you, uh, the first um, 
findings, these are preliminary findings because we are still writing and uh, in writing a process, clarifying things and you know trying to define uh, new new uh, 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 findings here, new data. So what is taking place here? Uh, yes, families in Cyprus they visit heritage sites for educational purposes and you can see very nicely the quotation from the teacher uh primary primary school teacher yota and she says that yes we are interested into heritage sites because as she says you know informing and learning the young generation so this is not that interesting yes we know about this what was uh nice to see is that our research participants they believe that is their parents' responsibility to engage their children and their grandchildren into heritage sites. So they believe that they should do it. This is their job as family, is their responsibility of grandparents. And Maria, who is a pre-primary school principal, she just said it very nicely. She said, it's important for me to learn and learn with my family about our cultural heritage. This is my responsibility towards my children and my grandchildren, yes? In this way, I try to follow up on our cultural culture. Maybe because she's a teacher, maybe because she understands the importance of, you know, this all um, uh, knowledge transfer into new generation. Yes, so she knows that it is her responsibility to do it. What was shocking for us, really very difficult to um, digest for us because uh, we <laughs> learned during COVID that we can do things online. Yes, even today I can talk to you online. Yes, I don't need to travel. So we can be more effective when we are online. We can do more things online. But here um, disappointment comes because uh, parents express that yes digital tools are important different websites platforms applications are very important when you are preparing collectively your family for heritage visit yes reading information yes which are available on internet watching documentary about specific heritage places before you go to see we get info from internet, yes? And then we create our plan about a specific trip. And yes, all the internet info, I do not trust to this called digital tourism. I cannot say that it can be replaced with one real experience. Yes, so they believe that you should go there, you should see, you should, you should experience in a real, you know, space and place, you should touch, you should listen. It's not enough to read from internet. Yes. So uh, what they say? They say that yet the parents do not believe that digital tools can be, you know, conductive to the actual transfer of heritage knowledge across the generation. Instead, personal visit, you have to be there yes, on heritage places is seen as the most essential in facilitating these intergenerational discussions between grandparents, parents and children on heritage is to have joint experiences and the learning of the younger generation. Yes, so what Philippos, who is an officer at the Minister of Education says, our children cannot learn from different websites and internet only. They need to verify their learning. And it's good to do it via various family trips and visits. Their learning benefits because they come in contact with landscapes and monuments outside of their daily lives. They learn about facts of historical importance in reality and not visualization. Yes, so here, it, we are disappointed, yes? But it is shocking for me to say, wow, you have to 
visit. You have to travel. Yes, you have to travel. You don't learn only through websites. And it's nice and uh, good to know about this. What is, again, very, um, very, very strong message coming from the research participants is that children during the COVID pandemic, during the lockdowns, they were at home. Yes, they were at home. They were having online learning sessions. And um, parents, grandparents, understand that the children are lacking of certain knowledge. They have lack of visiting places. Uh, in Cyprus, the uh, uh, curricula is built in such a way that every semester, every class, has to do at least two field trips from the school. But kids two years didn't go nowhere. So parents are aware of their of the of, of the gap which children are you know carrying with them and they believe that they have to fill this gap somehow. So they have to take their children to see different heritage places. And this also comes to the previous thing when you remember I was speaking about that they feel, parents feel responsible to their kids. So this is together, this comes together, you know, like responsibility and filling gap because of lack of school heritage visits, yes. And Kiriakos, who is a simple person, hairdresser says, yes, we at our age know a lot and we confirm them in every tour. We need to catch up a lot lost time because of the pandemic and they have to much more to learn. Yes, so he gets this understanding. Also, if you um, go into history of Cyprus, you uh, can learn about um, our conflict or our um, trouble past. So we have trouble past, which comes to 1974 because of Turkish invasion. And one third of the island is under Turkish um, um, occupation. And many families were removed from their homes to different cities. So this problem is very life. This problem is very painful. Um, and uh, uh, a lot of people are very sensitive about this in both places, yes. Uh, so uh, what families are saying? We know about our troubled past. We don't want to give um, any information to our children about our pain, about all death, about all this sad tragedy which took place years ago at the moment. We prefer to take our children into more happy heritage places. It's not the correct time to talk about this with them. This is about our trouble past, about uh, uh, all uh, difficulties which we went through. Is because it's still, you know, very painful to them. And Xenia, who is a retired Lyceum principal, she used to work, and I know her personally, she used to work many years as principal, and her family lost their house uh, because of this invasion, and they needed to run to different city and start again new life in different place. She says, we are proud of the places we visit. We enrich our knowledge by knowing the past of our country. But we cannot give the whole picture of our past to our children yet. They must grow up in order to learn about all. Knowing the wealth of our homeland is too painful. Yes, we appreciate our culture, but we choose to visit happy and friendly sites at the moment. Yes, so and I believe this happens in both places, in both 
you know, sites of, of beautiful island, which is called Cyprus. And again, as I said at the beginning, yes. So what role plays grandmother, grandfather, mother or father at heritage site when they are visiting with their families different monuments? And no one explains. No, there is no research showing, explaining this. And our participant says, the old generation who may have experienced some events helps the new generation to learn because they can make descriptions of events in the places where they played and give a more solid picture to the children. Yes? Uh, or Georgia, who is a PhD student, she says, their contribution, like the grandparents' contribution, is quite important. In order for young people to love and respect our heritage, they must know them through the eyes, the stories, and the memories of the grandparents. You see, so the role of grandparents is very vital, is very crucial, and very important here. Yes, and another thing, how families behave, yes, uh, and what do they do at different heritage sites usually. And Ilias, who is selling process, parents try to learn, yes, but also to inform children about where we are, the history of the monument. You know, children are usually ready to listen and explore different monuments and interact with them. But also Eliza, who is teacher, says that the smaller one explores places. They try to imitate some images, statues, yes, that he sees, like child, small child. Other place, run away, come back, explore and discover things that adults do not see is because we lose this creativity. We see things differently than children. And she says this. And also, uh, for example, Nefeli says that usually during these trips, she, grandmother, says stories about how she lived and compares how people now live in Cyprus. And Aristos, who is associate professor, says the older ones are more concerned with history and tradition. They buy, you know, traditional products and souvenirs. The younger ones explore the places more practically and explore every area of attraction. You see, so they say what is happening at these places. So up to now or today we know that our, you know, contribution uh, with our research is very straightforward. So we bring a new research perspective. So we research heritage tourism with new perspective, which is called family perspective, yes? A family has not go far, uh, you know, um, to examine uh, heritage sites in this way as we do. We examine or we research through leisure and recreation, but we do study different things and we offer you different results. Yes, uh, so to, in order to learn what is happening, what type of learning and knowledge is taking place, we take a family perspective uh, in order to research the, uh, heritage tourism. As well, a uh, new unit of analysis is offered here, which is very unique. And we talk about family as unit of analysis. And I won't talk more further because I think it's enough. What I want to say, and I said it before, is yeah, that yes, uh, we need to bring her tourism back. Yes, we need to support tourism. So by researching tourism, we can create new products. We can learn how other type of tourism is taking place, how to create other type of tourism, for example, spiritual tourism, yes, um, which is beautiful thing, uh, beautiful, you know, uh, uh, experience. So let's research uh, tourism more and more. Let's see how we can be sustainable when traveling. Let's inform. Um, 
other tour providers. Let's teach them because our job as educators and teachers is to teach hospitality and tourist providers to give perfect product outside, you know, to uh, tourists. And this is our job, job to do, to teach them. Not only to be digital, to use digital tools, but how to do it, how to be innovative, how to offer innovative um, products, tourist products, uh, and reshape and restart tourism and bring it back. Yes, because we have too much work to do after pandemic. Uh, these days. Thank you very much for uh, participating today um, and I am here to answer your questions. I also um, offer my email address so if I come here at the very beginning that is my profile. You can see uh, my email address. Give me one minute. You see my email address. You can see my uh, link which takes you to my college's website. Uh, so I am very happy to uh, help you to share my knowledge with you and uh, I come back <laughs> and I would like to thank you very, very much for uh, being here with me today. Thank you very much also on behalf of my colleague Prokopis. Thank you. Thank you so very much, ma'am, for that very, very interesting session. Uh, we cannot deny that traveling is an incredible industry which has a mysterious and magical aura and charm of its own and which unfolds as the, you know, enthusiastic travelers and globetrotters, they reach their destination and the magic unfolds. So the traveling industry, as you very rightly said, that during the pandemic, it suffered also. It suffered lots. And uh, the gap needs to be filled. Wherein our children are concerned, you focused beautifully that our children were, you know, holed up in their houses for their education sessions, for their studies, and even the people, you know, just confined within the four walls of their homes. So uh, now it's the right time to, you know, pull up our socks, gear up and pack our bags and just get ready to find a lovely destination, which, you know, where we are able to not only indulge in sightseeing, but also look at the renowned historical architecture, visit all the local uh, museums that document the past through the artifacts, art and literary remains or even something as quaint as sampling authentic historical recipes, you know, in their places of origin. People, you know, just love the cuisines. Mm -hmm. And I think that's very interesting once you go. So people love to combine the love of history with other tourist delights like shopping, amusement, park visits, and luxurious resort stays. Places that have a rich heritage and have at the same time defined a fine tourist infrastructure i think they cater to all the categories of tourists that get rated in the highest terms of popularity as tourist destinations so very rightly you have focused on family tourism heritage tourism the uh, participants the need of the hour to you know focus at the right things so that the tourism industry gets the right kind of attention which it has uh, uh, you know, not got during the past two years of pandemic. And all said and done, tourism is an industry that is the life and soul of every house and every family. People look up uh, forward to those breaks, you know, where they can just relax, unwind, and soak in the beauty of nature. So uh, just one question or two questions, ma'am. Uh, what are the different challenges that you fa think that besides COVID, otherwise also, the various challenges that this industry faces? Perfect question, thank you. Um, you know, um, in Cyprus, we uh, forgot to focus on family because we had so many travelers, we had so many tourists from everywhere. You know, we are very popular destination because people want to come to see, see, they want to enjoy, you know, uh, uh, swimming 
in the sea. They want to enjoy, you know, all these five star resorts. Uh, they want to go. They want to um, forget about difficulties, daily difficulties, about the reality. So they prefer to come to Cyprus. And our um, uh, orientation was uh, on international tourism. But because of COVID, we didn't have any tourists and uh, we forgot families. We forgot to create, as you said, um, um, uh, infrastructure for families. We forgot that small children are here as well, that the five, six year old child wants to uh, see places, wants to go to see museum. Yes, this is the time how he, she can spend free time with their parents. So uh, maybe we should uh, consider our orientation and uh, uh, look uh, into family as important uh, when talking about tourism. And as well, uh, we prob probably we can um, focus on domestic tourism as well, because you see that COVID doesn't stop. Here in Cyprus, we still have many uh, cases now. Many people are uh, in quarantine. So COVID doesn't stop. So let's be creative and let's challenge all this what is happening and tourists is here to be challenged and tourists can be used as a tool which can bring communities together we have to help the communities to different um, societies everywhere yes in our villages for example in rural areas how to help them by domestic tourists let's encourage families to go to different communities, to go to different um, villages, to see different places within countries. Yes. Uh, so this, I would say that maybe we can focus on also future research. Uh, and what is the most difficult when you do research? Most challenges, uh, challenging is that uh, people are ready to answer questionnaire. They are ready to tick, yes, no, yes, no. They face difficulties to give their opinion, which comes from their insight. Yes, to see, to express themselves, to speak, to give their own stories, to give their own, own experience. We are ready to answer ready questionnaire. We are ready for ready answers. But we are not ready to um, express our feelings. Uh, because of COVID, probably, we were pressed not to talk about ourselves, probably, because maybe, you know, it's not nice, it's not polite, but we should speak. We should say what we are, who we are, and how we feel. We have to say to others that I feel depressed, and it's normal to feel depressed. So we need to inform by qualitative research, other researchers, other readers, and big audience about our feelings, our uh, reflection on our feelings as well. Because in this way, we can encourage other people. We can let know other people that it's normal to feel as you feel. It's normal to have ups and down moments. That's, you know, how we are, we are people. Let's not forget that we are, we are human beings everywhere in any research we do. Thank you so very much, ma'am. Uh, very relevant points put forward. And uh, uh, we let us not forget, as you said, that uh, traveling helps uh, to explore, to discover, to learn and relearn and unlearn. So it's a great learning experience for the adults as well as our students. And uh, let us not forget our children because these are our future leaders. Let us yes. bring to them the world on a platter when we are asking them to travel, you know, and that's the best learning experience that a child remembers and retains lifelong. And they are such beautiful memories that they love to treasure and cherish. So on that note, I would love to sign off um, by thanking our viewers for being with us and uh, all the other viewers who will be eventually seeing our uh, show. 
I hope you all get excited and thrilled and ready to pack your bags and go on that long, you know, dreamt vacation that you have been planning for days and months. Because remember, COVID is here to stay and that's a new normal. A new normal with a different mindset we need to explore. We just don't need to sit back and think, oh no, the fear of the house, or the fear of the disease that we don't need to step out. On the other hand, we need to step out and face life beautifully. So thank you so much, everybody. Stay blessed. A very big thank you to Ma'am for being with us. And have a wonderful day. Stay blessed. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you very much. Thank you, ma'am.